Hey OT dudes and dudettes, let's talk about TPA for stroke. In this video, you will learn about ischemic strokes, how something like TPA may help, some of its use cases and precautions for occupational therapists to consider in acute care when working with patients who have had TPA. Hi, my name is Jeff and I am an occupational therapist. I make occupational therapy content on my blog, otdude.com, social media, podcasts, and here on YouTube. If you're interested in learning more about occupational therapy and what occupational therapists do, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss a single video. Also, check out my free resources in the description below. Let's get functional. Our bodies depend on oxygen to function. Our brain is no different and has a high demand for it as well. Our brains have many small blood vessels with circulation of blood and nutrients that is pumped from the heart. When there is a blockage, that may lead to an ischemic stroke with blood vessels downstream to the blockage not getting blood and oxygen. And over a period of time, if not resolved, will lead to cellular death and these parts of the brain dying too. In an ischemic stroke, a blood clot, which is made of fibrin, may break free or form over time at a site and create a blockage anywhere that blood is supposed to flow. I like to think of it as when something gets stuck in your straw, such as ice cream when you're drinking a root beer float. The other type of stroke is a hemorrhagic stroke, which is a bleed into the brain. This is why when someone has a stroke, no matter which type it is, that they get to the hospital as soon as possible as some types of stroke can lead to death if the underlying problem is not resolved. Also, IV TPA is only approved by the FDA to be administered within three hours. However, after it was approved, studies have shown 30 to 55% chance of full recovery within 4.5 hours to be used off-label which is why the 4.5 hour window is more commonly used for TPA nowadays. This is also why there's no time to waste when a stroke is suspected, and it's commonly called the stroke golden hour or TPA window because if a patient waits too long, they would no longer be able to get TPA. In fact, the earlier that TPA is given, the better the prognosis is for things like ADLs. What are the risks? There is a 6% chance of bleeding complications and a 1% chance of death with TPA. Let's talk about how it works. TPA stands for Tissue Plasminogen Activator. One way to think of TPA is as a clot buster. It travels to the clot site and begins breaking it down, thereby opening the flow of blood in the straw. The drug TPA binds to a protein already in the bloodstream called plasminogen, hence the name plasminogen activator. Plasminogen is then transformed into the enzyme plasmin. Plasmin helps to break apart the fibrin, which is the material that makes up the clot itself. Recanalization is a process of restoring flow or reuniting an interrupted channel of a bodily tube, such as a blood vessel in the brain. The goal of TPA in an ischemic stroke is therefore recanalization of the occlusion site as an IV thrombolytic. Let's talk about use cases. TPA cannot be used for all ischemic strokes. The larger the blood vessel, the less effective TPA will be in working alone as an intervention for recanalization. For example, the recanalization rate of the M2 branch is 44%, but only 6% at the terminal ICA C7 segment. When patients have an occlusion in a larger vessel, they may receive mechanical thrombectomy instead. To be eligible to receive TPA besides within the 4.5 hour window, the patient needs to be over age 18, have a suspected ischemic stroke as confirmed by testing, such as with the CT scan, have no tumors or AV malformation, a blood pressure less than 185 over 110, no history of major head trauma, neurosurgery, or stroke within 90 days, no active internal bleeding, and no suspected endocarditis. What happens if a patient is suspected of a stroke and has something else like a stroke mimicker, such as seizures, migraines, Bell's palsy, or even conversion disorder? 
Usually it is harmless if a non-stroke patient is given an IV TPA because the risk of bleeding complications is very, very low, almost 0%, as the criteria for TPA administration, such as active bleeding, are checked for anyways. An important vital sign that is monitored for acute ischemic stroke is blood pressure. The data in research is still not conclusive with whether to keep the blood pressure high, also known as permissive hypertension. It's not always best to bring the blood pressure back down right away or to a normal range because there is a balance of risk between maintaining adequate blood flow and perfusion to protect viable brain tissue around the stroke at the penumbra using collateral circulation versus the risk of additional hemorrhage, such as in a hemorrhagic stroke. A higher blood pressure allows blood vessels to perfuse the ischemic area. So as an occupational therapy student, new grad, or practitioner, especially in acute care, what are some precautions to be careful of? Before I go into my top three, I think the most important thing is to check for the doctor's orders to treat before you mobilize the patient. This is kind of obvious, but it can be overlooked as some doctors may put different orders such as bed rest only or not even put anything at all. So on the flip side, don't always take the MD order for the absolute because it may also be entered incorrectly. The most important precaution with TPA is with mobilization or early mobility. Follow your facility's recommendations for how early you can mobilize a patient for ADLs and things like that. Some facilities may be more strict than others, but in general, it is okay to mobilize a patient after TPA was given in 24 hours. As TPA has a half-life of only 5 to 10 minutes, it does get metabolized fairly quickly, so bed rest is not necessarily required for the entire 24 hours after it is given. Studies have shown no adverse effects to early mobilization after 13 hours of TPA, but again, check with your facility to see if there's a protocol or if you need a physician's order in a shorter time frame that you want to see the patient. The concern, of course, would be causing another bleed during therapy because of how TPA works to restore blood flow. The second precaution is blood pressure. Research will continue to make new recommendations and it'll change all the time for blood pressure ranges. So follow your facility's protocol or MD orders for blood pressure parameters. Or if there aren't any and you're feeling unsure, ask the doctor or neurosurgeon for some. Some doctors may want lower blood pressure ranges, while some neurosurgeons, for example, may want higher ranges. Some studies for blood pressure in patients who have received TPA within 72 hours recommends less than 180 systolic and less than 105 diastolic. In comparison, a patient who has had an ischemic CVA without thrombolysis or no TPA within 72 hours can be between 140 to 180 systolic and as high as 220 systolic. The most important thing is to take the readings before and after your sessions to compare to see if there is a drastic change. The third thing to look out for is neurological changes. Does a patient appear weaker? Are they having trouble speaking compared to earlier when you first saw them? Are they having trouble with balance or ambulation? Is there facial? or extremity paralysis, or other stroke symptoms. Because if you suspect something is going on, you will need to notify the nurse, provider, or call 911 right away. This is why having those blood pressures is also helpful. So don't let these factors scare you. As long as you're following protocol, using clinical reasoning, being alert and attentive, things generally work out okay. In my opinion, patients with stroke are the most challenging, but the most rewarding patients to work with. So what else can you do as an OT regarding CBA? Well, educate your clients, caregivers, and the public about the time sensitivity of having a stroke and how to react. I like to teach people the fast mnemonic for CBA, F for facial droop, A for arm drift, S for slurred speech, and T for time, calling 911 right away. Hope this helps. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and thanks for watching.